bunch of people were asking me to make another video and I hadn't made one in a while. It's been a summer. Let's just put it like that. Um, what I'm going to talk, talk about today is, first off, if you look at my community page, I put up a picture of my newish, new to me. I mean, it's a 2016 Hyundai that I'm still paying a bajillion dollars on. I think I owe a kidney or something like that. But it's newish to me. I've taken really good care of the outside and all that. And, okay, see if you can guess what happened. Um, I'm going to give you multiple choice. Either I backed into a small child with a particularly hard head, or... B, Eric farted at my car, my co-host on the um, podcast, and, you know, peeled all the paint off, now I gotta get it fixed. Or C, I let Steve drive in my car, drive my car for one of the first times ever, and something went awry. Can you guess what happened? Because I can tell you. Shit. So, here it, is, here it is, here's what it is. All right. We had went out of town, I think about a month or two months ago, whatever it was now, and for something for work, or our old work, it's a long story, again, I'll get there at some point, but uh, we went out of town, and it was getting late at night, it was really late, I had to pick him up from his job, and I was like, listen, I've been driving, we had to drive like three or four hours, and I'm like, I don't feel like driving, I'm like, can I trust you, because he's driven, and I know how he drives, but we were going to be driving a country highway shit where it's like impossible to fuck up, so therefore he probably would fuck up, but whatever, I was so tired, it didn't matter. I was like, is it possible you could do the rest of the driving once we get on like the highway like situation where there's like nothing around? I'm talking not usual highway. I'm not talking with cars. I'm talking with like, you know, uh, a mailbox every 50 miles, you know, that type of shit. So he's like, all right, perfect. Not a bad job. Pulls in. He parks epically. Like he always, he, he can't parallel park to save his life in the city. I don't know what it is about him. And I do suck at it too, but he's particularly heinous. He, he drives forward into every spot which doesn't make any sense to me when you have a spot like this and you have to get in it's just like putting your dick into a woman but bending it all the way this way first and then just kind of trying to cram it in it makes no fucking sense straight on straight back whatever the fuck so i was like okay not that bad so then after that we had gotten back and we were i forgot where we were now oh we were at a car wash a car wash of all places. I had a headache because I'd had like three root canals, which is another video in itself. Uh, I'm, I might be suing somebody, like literally might be suing somebody, but um, I probably won't, I'm too lazy. But <laughs> I had three root canals, I was feeling bad. I was like, can you maneuver it just into the car wash? We were right at the car wash, all right? And I was just like, it was hot out. And I was just like, I had gotten out to do something else. I think vacuum up car or something. Cause they had like a free vac. And I, can you do it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm pretty birdie. Yeah. 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 Ooh, ooh, look at the sky. I should have known that. So <laughs> he gets in and oh, now you want to turn bitch. Okay. That's great. I love that. When people do it the last minute, can you tell I'm really chipper too? Anyway, um, he decides, oh, okay. So he gets in, start, I swear to God, he had to do this turn and go right into where, you know, the Mexicans are standing waiting to clean the car. And the random Polish people are, too. It's a weird breed over there. It's like, usually it's all or none. Either it's a bunch of, like, Polish guys or it's a bunch of, like, Hispanics, at least, in my area. Whatever. Uh, so, he turns and then for some reason doesn't think he, have enough, he has enough room. And I'm looking and he's got the size of a football field in front of him. And I'm just, like, kind of like, huh? And I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, it's got bad. I don't want to damage your car. I don't want to damage your car. No, I don't want to do that because I want to back up. Just make sure we have enough room. We always have to be safe. Okay, I have my seatbelt on. Check. My cock ring. Check. Uh, disco in the background. Check. Okay, now I'm going to back up. And he's doing this shit. And I'm like, Steve, I have a rear view camera. And I see in the rear view camera a, pro, a pole approaching very fast. A big yellow fucking pole that I know soon is going to meld with my vehicle. So... <laughs> I'm like, Steve, 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 what? I'm trying to back up. No, don't interrupt me. I'm trying to be very safe. Boom. Boom. Now, of course, I got out and said, you know, it can happen. It's understandable. If you believe that, I got a fucking lake to sell you. Okay? Yeah, I was pissy as fuck. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I was pissy as hell. But I was trying to keep it cool because he's like one of my best friends. And I didn't want to get into it with him. And he actually says to me, he gets out, he's like, oh my God. Oh my God, did I do that? Did I do that? Yeah, you're not Urkel. Yeah, you did that. Yeah, look, what I showed on the thing. He also busted the taillight, which actually got me pulled over by a cop the other day, which is, it's fun. And so he's like, I'll pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> Was that a debate? 
did you think I was gonna go back? You know what? It's my bad for you know you not paying attention. So fuck it, don't worry about the six hundred dollars. Paint jobs are the worst. I mean, usually those are gonna be expensive. I don't care if it's a fucking nick on your car. Fucking some dumbass body shop owner is gonna look at you like, ah, it's a billion dollars. Yeah, we're, we're gonna have to get a clear coat. Then we're gonna have to spin one around five times because you know he kind of shakes a lot. He's got that one Parkinson's disease, so you know eventually it'll make him stray if we spin him around a couple times. Then he can paint it, and then uh, we have to blow on it like manually to make sure you know there's no like dirt. To... So all of us and my men, we gotta sit around in your car for two hours chanting. And blowing the pain that's gonna cost a lot of money like i've been to a body shop on my own before when i fucked up this car initially i'm not saying i'm the best the very one of the very first times I, very the first two weeks i had this car it's cursed i'm telling you it is okay the first two weeks i had this car i'll tell you what happened first two days after i got this car which was mid to end of april in 2019 okay i'm driving down the street and it starts to snow a hell of a lot Okay, you go slower. What could go wrong? Well, when it's heavy, wet, slushy snow and you're going through a particular area that's got lots of overhanging trees, those branches can come off or like a big blob of snow can come off and just fuck up your windshield, and, I mean, uh, your windshield wiper and bend it. Now, the odds of that are one in a billion because your thing would have to be slapping time in the right place and all this other shit and that blob would have to hit you at the right time. Guess who it happened to? Guess, guess. Right, two days after I got the fucking car. It chipped the paint on it and bent the fucker all the way out. So I had to get that fixed. A few days later, and I swear to you this one, I don't know what the fuck happened. Like, I honestly don't know. My car was acting funny. Like, it was kind of like, I don't know, like, hesitating a lot. And I knew something was wrong. And I'm like, something fucking is not right here. I got it from CarMax, and CarMax, you can suck it. Because you all sit there and say, we check everything. We look under it. We check, you know, your great-grandmother's vagina to make sure that she had no car keys hidden up there. We do everything, and our cars are just thoroughly exa Liar! Liar! They sell fucking beat-up fucking cars, in my opinion, allegedly. They do. They just fucking repaint them and do some shit with them. They're fucking liars. Because I'll tell you what. They said... New brakes, new this. And I see it, the obvious shit I could see. Had new wheels, all that shit. I'm like, okay, cool, not a problem. When I start hesitating one day, I'm at Starbucks, of course, which, by the way, brought to you today by, I swear I want an endorsement. But I start going, and I hit the brake, and I'm not stopping. And there's a huge fence in front of me with a bunch of metal poles. Can you guess who fucked up his front end? <laughs> like three weeks after he just got this car? I wanted to just... That's the point. That's the point in your life when you just want to run out and just bash the nearest person's head into a wall for no apparent reason. It's not their fault. You're just fucking annoyed and hate life at this point. So all right, that happens. So then I get a body shop to take care of that. Which, by the way, I didn't want to tell you how much it was, but I still owe them another finger. But it was, yeah, it was a lot of fucking money. <laughs> I had a body shop to take care of that, so I know body shops. So I'm like, oh, this is gonna be fun, and this was a lot worse than what Stevie did. All right, so fine. Then, I'm driving down the street, and my car starts hesitating. Like, uh, after the body shop thing. And I'm like, okay, what the fuck? What the motherfucking fuck already? Go to my mechanic. He looks at it. There was something, I, th I forgot exactly what it was, but like, the, the brake lines were old. The brake pads were fucked and worn. The rotors were fucked. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? He's like, no, yeah. And there was something else where like, I had to leave it there. I had no choice. If I would have driven it someplace, it would have made it a thousand times worse. And I know this guy, he's not a bullshit artist, whatever. So, I'm like, motherfucker. So, I call CarMax up, by the way. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, this happened. I'm going to send you guys the bill because there's a warranty in this motherfucking car. And you said you took care of everything in the first place. Smartass, CarMax guy calls me back on the phone. He's like, oh, okay, well, definitely. Yeah, well, if that happened, we will, of course, take care of it. He's probably sitting there just like jerking off or whatever. And then he calls me the next day after I get the repair. I said, I got the repairs. I'll bring it over there. I'm not trying to rook anybody. I'm just trying to show you guys. He goes, well, do you have the old parts? What? The old rotors and the uh, other thing, whatever it was now, that needed to be fixed? No, because I got it fixed. And I told you that. Well, you should have one of our guys tow it. I bought it from Buttfuck, Illinois. Like, I went out because this was a particular car I wanted, saw it on their side, and I went out to the Burbs, like fucking Hicksville, to get this shit. It's not like I live right by there. I said, you're telling me now, by the way, I should have stopped what I was doing, even though I was in the middle of like rush hour traffic, could have killed me, called a tow truck from you people, which I don't even know where your fucking tow truck is, 
and then it would drive me to one of your approved locations where they would just deny the claim anyway. Like, is that what you're fucking telling me? Because this is bullshit. I just got this car. By the way, I think I'm in the two-week window to return this motherfucker just how it is. Basically, yeah, I didn't get anywhere. I ended up eating it <laughs> for the cost. It was like 800 bucks. I'm like, sure, why not? I deserve it at this point. But I'm just tired of how shitty people can be. That's Stevie, great. You know, Auburn's like, hey, look, I got to take care of it. I fucked up. Not your fault, my fault. Got it. I contacted my landlord, my ex-landlord today, uh, from the old place where I lived, where my brother, like, and his horrible fucking partner moved in, and all this horrible shit happened, and whatever, and then, you know, shit went south, and I ended up getting attacked in my own apartment, and then I had to leave. Great. Uh, <laughs> because I was the one with the knife afterwards threatening to kill them. It, you know, it happens in every family. It was the holidays. No, I'm kidding. But it was, like, November. So I had to find a place really fucking fast. And uh, I was... On the lease, though I wasn't supposed to be on the lease, I spoke with my landlord, who I thought was a decent guy. By the way, if he's watching this, you can seriously sit on it. I don't give a fuck. I don't live at your fucking shitty building anymore. I don't give a fuck about you. I thought you were a nice motherfucker. You're an asshole is what you are. So he's like, oh, you know, he called me up, my landlord. And I said, listen, my brother's moving in. Do you know that? And by the way, I have my whole thing with my brother because my brother lied to me about being on the lease at first and blah, blah, blah. But I have been under the assumption that my brother and his wife, I'll call her, you know, Daffodil, that him and Daffodil had been on the lease. I was under that impression. I asked point blank to my brother. I'm not blaming the other. I'm blaming my brother on that one. I was like, did you, do they know you're here? Are you on a, yes, it, stop asking me. Why do you always ask me stupid questions? Because I find out later you're a fucking chronological liar or compulsive liar and you don't tell me anything. So my landlord at that time, I said, listen, I'm going to be moving out. I just need another two, three months. Because at that time, I had something wrong with my fucking stomach. And I had to go get like a colonoscopy. This was last year. Okay, honey, go. So, okay. Be a bitch. <laughs> She's like 10. Okay, I hope you never get your period. How's that? <laughs> never. Learn to ride the bike. Stranger things. Let's go. All right. So um, my landlord at the time called me up. And he's like, oh, no, it's no, it's no problem, you know. Hey, your brother moved, it's okay, you know. I'm like, I don't want to be on the lease. Can I just be on the lease for another two months? Because I am going to move out. I just have this medical issue that came up that I need to make sure it's not something bad. I, I'm, like, bleeding. Like, can you do that? Oh, no problem. I just need to put on temporary for you for two months. And then, you know, when you go, you go, you're not on lease. He's on lease. He takes over. Okay, okay, fine. Everything good, blah, blah, blah. Liar. Liar. Because when I, the incident happened... And I called him from a motel. You can read, this is on my podcast about, I think it's under, it's a JBTV Uncut podcast of here's what really went down or something. It's my, like one of my most listened to. I tell the whole fucking story. But basically he ended up telling me kind of in so many words that I heard him wrong and that, why, that I should evict those two who actually were half on the lease because I was there first and he didn't think they would pay their rent. And you know what? Then he actually said to me, you're all family. Why don't you just go make up? Fuck you. You didn't get fucking, are you crazy, motherfucker? No. So I'm like, listen, I'm moving the fuck out. I don't care what you say. You can't hold me to it. By the way, since you want to know a secret now, dude, if you're ever watching this ever someday, how did I get my new place? I had somebody pretend to be you. <laughs> I knew I need a landlord reference. I had somebody who I knew was really convincing, pretend to be your motherfucking ass. That's right. I said it. Pretend to be, I mean, it's not you necessarily, but my last landlord. I didn't use your name. But he was really convincing, so I did get the apartment that you didn't think I would get. So you could sit on it. But um, this comes to this point. I'm sorry it's a little lengthy video, but whatever. Uh, I had my initial deposit I put down with my folks, who at the time were not doing well when we moved in there, and I was living with them. So it was about $1,300. So I'm like, that's my deposit, which you usually get back you know, at the end of your little stay. Now, I knew I was fucked for the year, so I had to wait till this August to my name to be off the lease for them to sign their own fucking lease, which they did. Great. I'm going to get my $1,300. So, I remember, I, I call my landlord. He doesn't respond. Then I email them, and he gives me the most bitchy two-line email. I mean, this guy, I thought he was great. I really did. I feel like a fucking idiot for... I don't trust anybody anymore. Anyone. So he gives me an email back, or the part must say, you got your $1,300 uh, deposit back on November 22nd, 2017, and here's the check number. And I'm like, what the fuck? What is he talking about? I got it back. Then I remember, 
I had sent out, that was the amount for the rent. I had sent the rent out for that month in November when my mother had just fucking died in the hospital from neglect and I was not in my right state of mind, but I sent the fucking rent. He sent a check for the exact same amount of rent back to me, which I took to mean since there was no explanation to it, there was no notes, there was no anything. He could have said, you know, sorry, whatever. I think he did text it. Actually, his brother did. His brother was a lot nicer than he is. He's a fucking, you know, karma's a bitch, dude. And it's going to use you with no fucking Vaseline and I don't feel bad for you. But, um, yeah, so I remember getting that check back. And maybe it's wrong of me, but I was like thinking, wow, that's really cool. Because he was close, actually. He talked to my mom on the phone a lot about different things. He liked my mom, like, a lot. And I thought, wow, it's really cool. He's giving me this, he's giving me the month free. Because he didn't say, oh, this is your, your and your parents thing back. I didn't enter into a new lease at that time. I didn't enter into a new lease until the next August. Which makes no fucking sense why he give the, I'm starting to think now it's bullshit. I'm getting pissed. <laughs> but that's what he said today. So basically told me that the money that I thought that he gave me back, because I just sent the check out, the check comes right back to me, and I'm thinking, oh, wow, that's so fucking cool. Who does that? It gives you, like, so you know what, a free month of rent after something horrible happened to you, and someone that was super, super close to you died suddenly, and you're just left in this bizarre situation. I'm like, that was so awesome. No, apparently that was my deposit, or so he says. You know what? Seriously, dude, I swear, I hope your kids are autistic. I, <laughs> I don't care anymore. I don't give a fuck. I, okay, I don't hope they're autistic, but I seriously hope if you have a daughter, she's the biggest on the planet. I hope she does every... I hope she stars in the next, like, porno gangbang with, like, nine million people. I swear to God, I hope so. I really hope that for your kids. I do. <laughs> okay, I don't. You should never wish bad things on children. I hope that you end up in the next gangbang <laughs> Getting violated in your booty by several well-endowed gay porn stars or straight doesn't matter to me as long as they can get it up. <laughs> That's what I hope. So I hope that explains a little bit about where I've been, where my mindset's been at, and I'm actually on my way to my studio now to record the podcast with uh, Eric. By that I mean like a parking lot where I get a good reception. You don't know me. <laughs>